गुड इवनिंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम अभिजीत विक्रम हेड ऑफ इन्वेस्टर रिलेशन ऑन बिहार ऑफ इंडिया मार्ट इंटरनेशनल लिमिटेड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द कंपनीज क्वार्टर फोर एन एफ आई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर अर्निंग्स वेबिनार एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन्स विल बी इन द लिसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड्स joining us today from the management team we have mr dinesh agarwal chief executive officer mr vijesh agarwal full time director and mr pratik chandra chief financial officer before we begin i would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties kindly refer to slide number 3 of the earnings presentation for the detailed disclaimer Now I would I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Dinesh Agarwal for his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to India Mart's FY24 earnings webinar. We have circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our website as well as on the stock exchange website. I am sure you would have gone through the presentation, and I would be more than happy to take any questions. afterwards i am pleased to report that india mart has delivered a consolidated collections from customers of rupees 484 crore rupees in quarter 4 and rupees 1474 crore rupees in the full year representing a year on year growth of 16% and 21% respectively deferred revenue grew by 24% to rupees 1440 crores on consolidated basis consolidated revenue from operations has grown by 17% to rupees 315 crores for the quarter 4 and 21% to rupees 1197 crores for the full year unique business inquiries have also shown some good growth this year from 24 million representing a y on y growth of about 14% total paying suppliers have grown to 214000 the net paying supplier addition was slightly improved from about 1800 suppliers last quarter to 2700 suppliers in this quarter as we have been communicating since the last two quarters we continue to see more than anticipated churn on first year silver customers while our platinum and gold customers which constitute approximately 50% of our customer base and 75% of revenue continue to have very very low churn and continue to grow healthily in terms of arpu as well as numbers both as soon as we see improvement in the churn on the silver customers we would come back with a better guidance on net addition per quarter as we continue to strengthen our organization and leadership we are set to welcome mr jitin divan who would be joining us as a cfo designate from may of 15th and would take over the role of cfo from june of 15th mr pratik chandra who has been with us uh, as a chief financial officer for almost 9 years now would move on to become the chief strategy officer and focus more on inorganic growth including exploration of mutual synergies between india mart and its investing companies now i will hand over the call to brijesh to update about busy infotech thank you and over to you brijesh hi good evening everyone uh, busy has uh, done a net billing of 18.1 crore in q4 uh, and 69.7 crores in the full year this represents a year on year growth of 29% and 45% respectively the revenue from operations uh, grew by 24% year on year to 14.4 crores uh, in q4 and uh, it grew by 23% uh, to 53.3 crores for the entire year the deferred revenue has uh, grown by 59% to 43.5 crores busy uh, has also generated positive cash flows uh, from operations of 6.1 crores during the quarter and uh, 24 crores for the full year uh, during the quarter uh, we also sold 9.5 k uh, new licenses taking the total count of licenses sold to 3 lakh 64000 uh, the new licenses sold during the entire year 
are approximately 33,000. The overall performance has been uh, in line with our expectations and uh, we are uh, focused on maintaining our uh, growth rate in the coming year as well. Uh, with this, I'll hand over the call to Pratik so that he can discuss about the financial performance. Good evening, everyone. I will take you through the financial performance for the quarter and the fiscal year ending March 2024. Consolidated collection from customers was rupees 484 crores in the fourth quarter and rupees 1474 crores on a full year basis representing a year on year growth of 16% and 21% respectively. India Mart standalone collection from customers for the quarter were at rupees 465 crores and for the full year were at rupees 1399 crores, registering year on year growth of 16% and 20% respectively. The standalone revenue from operations stood at 299 crores for the quarter and rupees 1139 crore for the full year, registering year on year growth of 17% and 21% respectively. Our growth in revenue was primarily driven by a 6% increase in paying subscription suppliers and in 10% improvement in ARPU due to higher monetization. Deferred revenue stood at 1440 crores, an increase of 24% on a YOI basis. EBITDA of India Mart standalone business stood at rupees 90 crores per quarter four and rupees 334 crores for the full year, representing a margin of 30% and 29% respectively. Consolidated EBITDA was at rupees 84 crores for quarter four and rupees 331 crores for the full year, representing a margin of 28% for both the periods. Consolidated net profit for the quarter was rupees 100 crores, which included one-time net fair value gain of rupees 29 crores on account of revaluations of few of our investments, primarily Procmart, due to their recently concluded fundraise activity. Consolidated cash generated from operations was rupees 260 crores for quarter four and rupees 559 crores for the full year. Consolidated cash and treasury balance stood at rupees 2340 crores as of March 31st, 2024. Board of directors have also recommended a final dividend of rupees 20 per equity share for fiscal year 2024, subject to approval of the shareholders at the AGM. Thank you very much. We are now ready to take any questions. We will now begin the Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question to the panelists, kindly raise your hand and allow camera and microphone access. Alternatively, you may type your question in the chat menu and we will revert on it. Please restrict to two questions so that we may be able to address questions from all the participants. We will wait for a couple of moments while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Vivekanand from Ambed Capital. Hi, Vivekanand, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. This is Vivekanand from Ambed. So my two questions, the first one is on collections. The last two quarters, we have been seeing that the standalone collections have been growing at 16% year on year, materially below the trajectory uh, the 20% plus trajectory uh, that Dinesh, you, you keep highlighting. I understand some of this could be due to churn, which may be temporary. But uh, your aspiration was to grow collections at 20 to 30% CAGR. And, and uh, now collections is growing at a materially slower pace. So just wanted to get your thoughts on the extent to which the market is penetrated and are there any other challenges that you see that are perhaps symptomatic of uh, of, uh, of of this uh, issue which uh, which is obviously uh, a very big one for investors the second question is on the uh, margin trajectory we are seeing that the margins are improving uh, costs seem costs seem to be under control not growing at the same pace as before uh, could you help us think through the margins for this uh, for the standalone business uh, over the next two three years and the key levers? Thank you. Thank you, Vivekanand. Yes, uh, you rightly highlighted the last uh, quarter our collections grew by seventeen quarter percent, and this particular quarter our collections from customers grew at sixteen percent. So, uh, as you rightly highlighted. 
that the number of customers, uh, net customer addition has not been growing uh, for the last four quarters or so. And that is uh, putting a pressure on the uh, collection only for coming from the ARPU. So if you really see out of the 16% or 17% collection growth that we are getting, only 6% is coming from the new customers, while most of the other 10% is coming from uh, ARPU growth uh, per customer. We were hoping that uh, you know we will get another 2-3% uh, increase in the customer base uh, per quarter, uh, which is happening. Uh, last quarter, we... Uh, were add, we added the lowest ever customers at 1,800 customers. And uh, this quarter, uh, we have added 2,700 customers. I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, slowly and slowly, we will improve on uh, net customer addition. And uh, my aspiration, as you rightly said, continues to be 20 to 25% in the collection growth. 30% uh, at this uh, juncture, uh, on a standalone basis, sounds little difficult, but yes, on a uh, consolidated basis, I continue to have an aspiration for 33% of the collection growth or uh, revenue growth. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, nothing materially that I can uh, say. Uh, one thing that I can probably point out is that uh, we have... Uh, continuously uh, found ways uh, on the platinum customer to improve the uh, ARPUs. And some of those ARPUs, uh, as we have slowly and slowly, as we are in implementing the category-based uh, pricing, uh, some of those uh, customers are taking little more time uh, than anticipated uh, to convert to higher value packages. So that could be uh, just one, but I am not yet uh, able to definitely say that other than the customer churn, anything else is uh, uh, doing that. On the margin side, as you can see, two, three things have happened. One, uh, we got our last quarter annual increment affected from the 1st of December instead of 1st of January. So some of it is uh, uh, helped by that. Secondly, if you see on the sales and marketing side, we have continued to improve uh, quarter and quarter in terms of sales and marketing cost per. Uh, so while it was, uh, uh, it used to be, uh, you know, 20% in the F FY23, it has come down to 18%, and in this quarter, it is 17%. How it has been happening? Because as I promised you, we are going to probably cut down a little bit from tier four and non-profitable places. Uh, so that optimization and focusing on uh, more core markets uh, has been able to do this. Some of it could be productivity gain. Also, the overall cost base, which, which had grown very, very rapidly in the uh, from mid of FY22 to mid of FY23, because we were hiring uh, heavily on the product and technology front also. So if you see, there is a consistent drop uh, from 19% to 17% as uh, revenue from operation. So that is also helping. And maybe a very little coming from the general and administration. Uh, so general administration is not coming much because... Uh, uh, most of the uh, juice has already been taken out. Uh, but as the revenue will continue to grow, uh, maybe a few bips every year we will get from there. So from that perspective, I can assure you that uh, we are now feeling a lot more confident of 30% plus margin. And uh, maybe we will improve by 1% every year uh, going forward from here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dinesh, for the very elaborate answers. Uh, just pressing a bit further on the collections point, uh, how how confident are you to resolve this issue uh, with respect to churn? Because this is the third quarter that churn seems to be 
cited as a key issue and uh, you don't yet seem to have the answers to resolve the elevated levels of churn and uh, if i may also add uh, could you uh, could you help us understand the churn levels in percentage terms uh, across the key customer buckets thank you so as i said uh, in the platinum customer our churn are like a half a percent per per month uh, or 6 to 7% 8% uh, per annum on a gold uh, we continue to have 12 to 14% or uh, 1% uh, per month or 12 to 14% per annum on the silver side uh, on a silver monthly we are like 7% to 8% per month and on the uh, silver annual we are running at uh, about 40% uh, per annum so these are the uh, churn metrics that i uh, repeated last time also uh, very little improvement even if, it, if even if we get uh, uh, 1% per month improvement uh, uh, in the tele monthly or the or the silver monthly what we call internally uh, and silver annual i think we would be suddenly looking at a uh, double the net customer addition from here on so mm, i hope that uh, over the next uh, quarter or so i should be able to give you some positive results but that's the only thing i can say for now sure thank you and all the best thanks vivekanand next question is from the line of nikhil choudhary from novama hi nikhil please go ahead with your question yeah thanks for the opportunity uh uh dinesh uh, sir uh, my first question uh, is on the collection side again uh, just want to understand last time when we discussed uh, the uh, the commentary by you was that collection we uh, will go back to 20% plus in coming quarters and given the collection uh, slow down further so while uh, supplier addition part uh, was part of the expectation i believe so was there some dis disappointment uh, even on arpu side and that's what led to collection uh, where they are also while uh, ambition is to uh, uh, get back collection to r25 plus or 30% growth any guidelines uh, for fi25 for coming quarters uh, given supply addition uh, continue to remain lower i i would continue to uh, hope for a 20% plus collection uh you know pratik is all, uh, telling me to say, say uh, holi was in the last week in the march uh, i don't want to take that uh, uh, take that uh, face behind the shield uh, but you know all said and done i think uh, 20% collection is uh, doable uh, we should have done that uh, purely and purely uh, could be one day here and there miss but uh, 20% collection is doable and i am confident and i continue to be confident uh, that uh, we will deliver a 20% uh, collection growth uh, coming quarter and coming many quarters sure sir uh, there is uh, for the improvement uh, in other uh, few kpis uh, especially register buyer entries further last time you mentioned that you know it could have increased due to some uh, scrapping or something uh, or web web crawling or something but uh, is this improvement is uh, now a sustainable trend or organic trend and do you think uh, 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 this will lead to improvement even in you know uh, uh, purchasing or uh, unique business inquiry increasing because uh, while the unique business inquiry increased 14% yy from a lower base it's at a similar level what we were seeing in quarter 2 so from that level we haven't seen a material improvement in business inquiry so uh, is register buyer can be seen as early indicator there i think you should always focus on uh, unique business inquiries and unique business inquiry number has grown uh, handsomely uh, by 14% uh, this quarter also and 14% last quarter also uh, so effectively if you see fy22 and fy21 were both covid years and during the covid we have gone through a lot of uh, you know shortage and lot of uh, medical devices and uh, medical related items food and food related items now that world has gone back to uh, 
physical world you know we hardly saw a very little drop in uh, unique business inquiry in fy23 and fy24 uh, we are almost back at uh, fy21 and 22 numbers so effectively uh, uh, now we are consistently doing uh, 23 24 million uh, per quarter so i am uh, confident that uh, next next year we will comfortably be uh, looking at 100 million uh, plus unique business inquiries uh, so i uh, i i don't get uh, where are you saying that 14% was last quarter also and this quarter also uh, in in terms of the registered buyers as i said a lot of lot of scraping nowadays is very common for uh, very uh, very popular websites and uh, people also come and uh, try and see if this particular Uh, number or this particular email or has a account on india mart or account on facebook or account on uh, amazon or account on uh, uh, zomato so there are a lot of these advertising companies are also trying to collect this kind of data from different uh, mechanism so that is why i don't rely too much on the uh, registered buyer numbers or the traffic numbers Uh, more so on the unique business inquiries numbers. Sure, sir. Understood. Sir, last one on margin. Margins uh, were very strong, sir. Uh, similar to last quarter, uh, even though you highlighted that uh, wage hike started uh, from December this time. Still uh, on Q and Q basis, uh, the margins were uh, more or less flattish, right? Despite of two month of uh, wage hike in quarter four, and clearly sales and marketing is the one part where uh, uh, there was hardly any improvement on Q and Q basis, despite uh, general trend what we have seen in previous years that uh, you pay large bonuses. Is it fair to assume? that uh, you know the benefit is largely due to lower bonus payment no sir uh, so if you will see the uh, customer service cost the most of the bonuses will go into the customer service because they come for renewal and upsell uh, the on the sales and marketing uh, if you see on quarter on quarter this is the new customer acquisition uh, engine uh, most of the uh, bonus will be an and bonus this particular year also i if i remember correctly was higher by 40% from the previous year same quarter uh, so uh, i don't sure. know which which sure, number sir. you are referring to so sure, sir understood the only point uh, last one i have is regarding uh, uh, the employee addition which was about 200 just wanted to confirm is uh, this addition was for the full quarter or th- this 200 addition was during the end of quarter just from cost uh, perspective i don't have that detail i don't have that detail sure sir thank you good luck for coming period thanks nikhil Next question is from the line of Swapnil from JM Financials. Hi, Swapnil. Please go ahead with your question. Hey, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, I wanted to understand on the coll- uh, the uh, breakup of the collections growth, uh, which is around sixteen percent. So, what I understand, obviously, it is uh, it includes the paying supplier base and then the ARPUs, but there is also a third element, which is basically your uh, the average tenure uh, or the uh or, or customers are taking a longer period uh, tenure instead of a one year or a monthly plan so that also uh, supports collections growth if i'm not wrong so just wanted to understand so uh, if i were to uh, break it down uh, what would be the collections growth attributable to because some of the uh, customers would have taken longer tenure plans within that 16% thank you swapnil uh, i don't have that particular number uh, handy uh, not much of a material change because uh, on the multi year customer mix uh, so annual and monthly mix uh, annual has definitely increased by 4 5% because monthly customers we have 
try to discontinue from tier four uh, towns. But you want to add something? Yeah, so, so, so just to clarify, uh, I think when you're looking at ARPU, uh, that is essentially the, the revenue numbers, which is a, a result of the collections done uh, in the previous quarters, because you know 80% of the revenues is coming in from the uh, opening balance of deferred revenues of that particular quarter, right? So when we look at collection for the quarter, uh, you know deferred the six percent is uh, like let's say the customer group, and you can say roughly around ten percent is uh, an ACU growth or uh, collection per uh, customer growth. So most of this growth uh, is largely from the uh, the uh, gold and platinum customers. No, but he's asking annual versus multi-year. Has there been a change in the mix? No, no. The, 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 the mix had been uh, pretty similar. It's just the total customers count of the annual uh, and multi-year has grown. Gold and platinum customers count has grown. Yes, that's the only thing. Okay. So not a material change there. And that's okay. also visible in your uh, deferred revenue schedule. So if you re really see deferred revenue schedule, uh, the current and non-current portion haven't changed uh, materially. Okay, I take your point. But uh, if I were to just understand it a bit more, uh, so typically collections growth, uh, collections mainly co is com uh, comes from the uh, the renewals or people in the gold and platinum uh, tiers, right? Because uh, silver uh, inherently contributes very uh, less uh, to the collections. Yeah. Uh, you know, right? Uh, and my sense is like the 80% of their uh, uh, collections comes from the uh, the premium categories versus around 20, 15 to 20% from silver. So yeah. why would a churn, so my question is, why would a churn in sil uh, silver category impact your collections growth? I mean, yeah. if, if it contributes just 15 to 20% mm. to your collections, why is your collections growth slowing down then? Mm. Yeah, you are a very right question, and that should have slowed down only by one or two percent, not by four or five percent. You are right. So that four or five percent, because what happens if the, if there is a continuous, uh, continuous low growth in the customer base, we our ability to upsell from the silver to gold to platinum also gets limited. So the collection growth, while you are right, it comes from gold and platinum uh, majorly, but uh, it's been four quarters or, or three full quarters where we have not been able to grow uh, customer base significantly. Every every time we add five, six, seven thousand customers, we also add a pipeline to gold and platinum, uh, which will give you a nine months later or a six months later. Uh, the same customer will go to the gold or platinum and give you one lakh rupees there. So since this, uh, and I explained this earlier also, when, when this has started happening, that uh, if the net customer addition is one quarter here or there, uh, I'm not bothered about uh, long-term growth opportunities. But if the uh, customer addition uh, for four or five quarters going to be affected, then it will start to show up in uh, collection first. Collection last quarter was 17% growth and revenue uh, was still growing at 21%. This quarter, if you see, collection growth has also come down to 16% and revenue growth has also come down to 17%. So if you take our business, uh, customer growth followed by uh, deferred revenue growth, followed by, uh, um, followed by collection growth, followed by deferred revenue growth, and followed by... Uh, uh, revenue growth. So they all will uh, show up uh, one one or two quarter after the uh, thing. So if, if something goes wrong for a uh, for a continued larger long period of time, it's more like a 100 uh, day moving average. So uh, if a uh, if number of customers for 365 days have not been adding up to the expectation, the collection will start to slow down. If the collection will start to slow down, uh, a deferred revenue would start to slow down. And if deferred revenue would start to slow down, uh, the revenue would start to slow down. Uh, so that's what we are seeing. And I am hoping that customer growth would take a U-turn from here on. And over the next two, three quarters, uh, it should uh, come back 
टू अवर फाइव सिक्स थाउजेंड नॉर्मल कस्टमर ग्रोथ ओके uh and uh, one more question uh, with respect to the churn itself now you in the opening remarks you mentioned that uh, the churn is happening uh, mainly in the first year silver uh, silver monthly customers right uh, and i'm presuming uh, uh, they would be onboarded at a average realization of around 2.5000 which was the norm uh, prior to the may hike that we took uh, so if we are not able to retain uh, these uh, customers who were uh, there at a 2. Point, you know at 2.5k per month and now we have taken a 20% uh, hike uh, in may what is the confidence level of you uh, you have uh, to keep on uh, adding customers at 5 5 6000 that you just mentioned because uh, i would presume the customers who are on a lower uh, realization they would be uh, uh you can retain them far easier than someone who is on a uh, you know 20% higher realization and so we one, are seeing the challenge in the load here uh one i think our price was 3000 plus tax uh, just pre covid we brought it down to uh, uh 2500 uh, during the covid because the COVID, we wanted to support the Uh, thing, uh, the churn did not go out of hand uh, in the May uh, in the uh, uh, until March twenty twenty three, and and you may be completely right that uh, you know is this five hundred rupees uh, that is causing this churn to happen? Uh, while all our understanding uh, is that. it is purely and purely affordability uh, item it is nothing to do with a uh, conversion item or uh, stickiness item uh, people who want to try um, at that point of time it does matter so our gross additions should suffer and they did suffer but on a trial basis if somebody tries it for a month or two or three uh, either he will get enough value that it will be more than enough for uh, for a 2500 or a 3000 rupee even for a 5000 rupee uh, customer it is the entry level which is uh, more problematic uh, post 3 to 6000 there are very few customers who want to continue on a, a monthly basis they would either move to a trust seal or move to a maximizer or move to a star supplier uh, within a Uh, year or 18 months of time frame uh, there are very few few customers who stay for second year or a third year on a uh, silver monthly customer in the silver annual yes you can say that uh, almost 50% of the customers will continue even in the second year as a silver annual but not in silver monthly uh but uh, just but what is then what is the confidence that we we would be able to do 5 to 6000 additions that you just mentioned uh, uh, next year uh, given that this issue may persist uh, right uh, next year as well as i said you know i've been trying uh, i can only say i'm trying okay so reducing the price won't help that much i can say okay got it uh, thanks for the opportunity and all the best Thanks, Vipnil. Next question is from the line of Samarth Patel from Equira Securities. Hi, Samarth. Please go ahead with your question. Okay, we could not connect with Samarth Patel. we'll take question from mr anirudh shetty from solidarity advisors hi anirudh please go ahead with your question Anirudh, please unmute yourself. 
Yes. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Thank. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions on my side. Um. So, just one question is, you know, uh, as we aspire to grow collections at twenty percent plus, is it fair to assume that um the buyer unique buyer inquiries also must grow at a similar pace? Because finally, um, it's the buyer inquiries that I feeds our customer grow addition growth or ARPU increase over time. Um, and if that's true, then um, uh, do you think that the you know the business inquiry growth that we're looking to achieve, which is say ninety three million going to hundred million, um, would that be sufficient to kind of drive that growth? So just wanted to understand uh, how are we thinking about long term you know business inquiry growth to kind of achieve our aspirational collection growth? Yeah. So uh, if you see uh, our traffic. Uh, and active buyers and unique business inquiries over a long period of time uh, have grown at a 20% CAGR growth rate, while our paying suppliers have grown at 15% CAGR rate. So we still have uh, sufficient enough uh, margin, and this is on a CAGR level, to monetize customers uh, better by doing a better matchmaking. So I don't think it's the number of uh, buyers. Yes, it, number of buyers would help, and uh, but will will that uh, is that a limiting factor for us uh, over the next few quarters or few years? No. So over a longer period of time, uh, even if my business, unique business inquiries grow by. Uh, 15%, I think we should continue to grow by 20% in terms of the uh, collection growth. Uh, for now, uh, even if we are growing at 10%, uh, because we had a uh, excellent jump from uh, FY20 to FY23 uh, at 30 odd percent, I think we are fine there. Mm. It is not because of the less number of buyers that we are uh, reducing. Yeah, it is the because of the kind of buyers that a supplier is looking for or the location in which a supplier is looking for. That is not happening. And most of the time, we are still finding the supplier's uh, own uh, ability to understand and uh, put enough time and uh, energy on the platform uh, to be able to convert those leads. Uh, so they say that uh, you have enough leads, uh, but we could not convert them because uh, the buyer was asking for too much of a discount or we did not do enough follow-up. So those are the uh, uh, those are the one of the important pieces of uh, churn. Uh, but yes, uh, more buyers would definitely help. And, uh, and we continue to find ways uh, to serve the buyer better so that we can have more repeat buyers because in terms of the total registered buyers or in terms of the uh, last 12 month active buyers we are already reaching almost 40 million uh, active buyers looking at the b2b market side i don't think uh, i mean we might be already uh, 40 percent penetrated uh, in terms of the buyer side base uh, I'm, I'm, i just keep assuming that there would be 100 million b2b buyers uh, in India, uh, whom we can attract uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, how many of them we can attract uh, uh, on quarterly basis, on monthly basis? That is the uh, more uh, important piece for us. Hope that answers. No, uh, very helpful. And um, if say if the market is 100 million, we are at 40. Do you think at some point advertisement could help to attract more buyers? And um, from a frequency of transaction perspective, just getting them to do more, uh, 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 transact more on your platform, what are the levers that we have available there? Yeah, so when when, when we get a little bit uh, handle on churn, I think we will um, try and uh, address the buyer churn also. First, let us get some, some, some comfort on the supplier churn and then we'll uh, come to the buyer churn also. Um, so my next question is on uh, the gross profit margin. You know, the last couple of years, uh, gross profit margin seems to have come down. Um, just want to understand uh, the reasons and, you know, going forward, where do you think the gross profit margin could settle? 
So pre-COVID it was 72%, now we are 73%. Uh, I mean, FY21, 22, 20 were anyway uh, different years and then we uh, got back uh, all the investment in place. So I think we are doing fine and we'll continue to uh, probably improve by 1-1% from here on. So we should see a improvement in uh, when you say EBITDA margin can improve by one percent. That's um, is that primarily going to come from gross profit margin improvement, or we could see. Uh, I, I think it will come more from the uh, from the bottom, uh, less from the uh, gross profit margin. Gross profit margin might might improve by half a percent or so, but uh, uh, sales and marketing and technology and content, I I believe we will uh, we should be able to. I mean, it's a combination of all of them, but not on a quarterly basis, but on a yearly basis when we will draw the trend, uh, we will know. But I am more confident that we should be able to do more than 1% for sure. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank, thank you for taking my questions. That's it. Thanks, Anirudh. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Banerjee from ICSI Securities. Hi, Abhishek. Please go ahead with your question. Abhishek, we can't hear you. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, Abhishek. So, uh, so sorry. So, sorry. No, uh, just uh, trying to understand on the manpower cost bit, right? Uh, the, the net additions have been low for almost uh, the last four quarters. Uh, so uh, by now, we would think that uh, man manpower should have come off a little bit in terms of uh, additions. So what is your outlook going ahead? And also this quarter, I saw that the outsourced sales cost has actually declined on a sequential basis, uh, right? So is that indicative of a strategic call to you know not outsource as much anymore? Because uh, some of the churn was... Also, uh, because, uh, due to this. So, uh, Abhishek, I have repeat here. So, if you, uh, you know, recollect in the last quarterly call, we communicated that, uh, you know, uh, from a sales outsourcing standpoint, there were two kinds of outsourcing. One, uh, you know, we had uh, a channel partners arrangement and roughly around 50% of these sales were coming okay. in out of the... 40% of these sales were coming in out of that arrangement. So that continues to be as it is. We continue to you know, build on that piece. The second uh, kind of an outsourcing was, uh, you know, wherein we have outsourced sales. Uh, and uh, it was more uh, the temp staffing, the temp staffing uh, to the kind of the companies like GI, Spectrum, Tint, these kind of companies. Uh, that part is what we were looking at, you know, building uh, the sales team in-house. And reducing dependence on, uh, you know, those kind of uh, outsourcing sales stuff. So, uh, so that was a movement that we planned for the teams uh, in that was supposed to be done in two to three quarters time frame. So half of that movement has happened. So that's why you see a reduction in the outsourced sales cost, you know, to that extent, and uh, that cost would have got added to the uh, manpower cost. Other than that, it has been uh, the normal increments and. The head count increases and the other functions if there is. And that is why you are not seeing the manpower cost coming uh, declining because some of the outsourcing cost has shifted to the manpower. Understood. Understood. So also with regards to the additions, uh, right? Net additions. Uh, given that from Q1 FY24 is when you had the problem of churn. And if I think that so by this time, probably uh, most of the people who were on the verge would have churned out, right? So that kind of implies that Q1 FI25, the churn numbers should come down uh, pretty sharply. Uh, is there something that I'm missing in this analysis? No. <clears throat> Sorry, Abhishek, we could not understand uh, the... No. the so one year that you, you're drawing first. No, so I'm saying, see, uh, these people, uh, the people who were churning out were mostly silver monthly and uh, silver uh, uh, yearly customers, right? So I would imagine that 
the people who were churning out uh, i mean the less valuable customers would have churned out within a year's time frame right because uh, they all their uh, uh, subscriptions would have expired so from q1 fy25 we should not see the same problem uh, in in i mean no, that is what it is it's a so, cyclical uh, yeah so abhishek this is like let's say the uh, customer acquisition and the churn is like it's a monthly progress right it happens every day so uh, you know it's it's it will continue to be a cyclical issue the only thing what we saw in the last year was that uh, you know since we started acquiring customers a year before uh, the proportion of the first year customer to the overall customer base you know was uh, slightly higher and because of which since in the first year customers there was an higher churn uh, you know you were uh, seeing that kind of you know churn so uh, only uh, as a proportion uh, if that mix improves that benefit would certainly be visible however mm-hmm. the churn rate if i compare it on like to like basis on the silver customers specifically the uh, the first year customers whether in a monthly or on an annual basis that continues to stay at the elevated levels as we said no that i understand but just now you also spoke about the first year customers right so obviously if the net additions have been on the lower side in the last one year yeah, you are right you are right so if if the net additions are lower uh, the first year uh, churn should come down uh, on a on a yearly basis because the net addition itself is lower right. so that 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 should help us uh, 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 by some margin yeah Great. So, also, if I were to try and understand the strategy for monetizing the other part of the supplier base who are not paying anything right now, and I know, I mean, this is obviously much easier said than done. Uh, but but is there something that you are working on? Because see, on one hand, I completely understand the value added offerings that you are giving. for your platinum customers i mean for people to be moving to the higher end of the spectrum right but at the same time there is obviously need for a platform to be a place for you know just converted businesses i mean largely offline businesses to just come online and exist right or to create a foothold on the online uh, uh, online part uh, so what is the strategy is there any way that some kind of monetization can be worked out here i mean we tried in the past uh, by way of ratun or things like that or, i mean you are you are saying that is there a value in charging a lifetime free uh, or or at a very low cost uh, with no roi free uh, free listing on a, in a directory yeah uh, i mean monetizing something 1000 uh, rupees a year uh, the cost of sales is too high you know the cost of sales is too high but it's a good idea we will we will try once again to see if there is something that we could uh, sell for 1000 rupees a year perfect and and uh, in terms of the overall uh, uh, you know consolidated performance uh, I was uh, a little surprised to see that uh, uh, busy uh, on a yearly basis has not uh, really you know uh, outperformed on the profitability part. Uh, anything that you would like to call out there, uh, and and if there are any uh, corrective actions that are being you know put in place. I I I don't think we should look at the uh, profitability of busy. My my continuous recommendation to busy is. Uh, to have a zero beta and uh, invest uh, all the money that they can generate uh, into growth uh, so i'm not uh, even looking at one one 1 crore rupees quarterly beta uh, as being something substantial uh, my only advice is that uh, don't go into negative uh, but uh, don't try and chase 2 3 crore rupees beta every quarter uh, or 2 3 Um, crore rupees of a beta every year. So uh, and the other thing I wish it there is uh, if you see uh, our deferred revenues yes. uh, have grown by fifty nine percent. The net billing has grown by forty four percent. So what you see is that uh, there is money that has been collected from the customer which is yet to be recognized. 
So when you see the accounting EBITDA, uh, accounting EBITDA will be on a, a lower recognized revenue, uh, whereas all the costs of manpower marketing that we've invested in, that is already budgeted in, and that is why you see uh, lower EBITDA there. But when you look at it on a, uh, let's say, cash-to-cash -cash basis, uh, the margins still are healthy. Understood. Understood. So also, uh, you've uh, you've very kindly shared a sheet on uh, your uh, 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 capex expenditures and all. There, I uh, saw uh, uh, some strategic investments which were done in this year to the tune of around I think twenty five crores. Yes. So, uh, what what was this? Uh, if you could give us some clarity. So these have been the the follow on investments that we've been making in our. Uh... Investing companies. This is uh, the yearly number of uh, 25 crores of share. So I can give you, in fact, the entity-wise breakups. Uh, you know, maybe uh, later on. So Got it. No, no, that that's fine. I was just un trying to understand if, if something fresh you have done or not. Okay, Th this is very helpful, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Abhishek. Next question is from the line of Sarang Sanil from RW Investment Advisors. Hi, Sarang. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Hi. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, sir, was there any depreciation amortization item that has materially impacted uh, this quarter? And should we expect this run rate to continue? Uh, because we saw quite a jump this quarter. Yes, sir. And so in this particular quarter, uh, other than the the uh, regular depreciation, uh, there is an uh, you know one time uh, impairment charge on uh, a right of use of land that we had. Uh, you know during the quarter, this is a land. It is there uh, in uh, sector seventy five Noida. And uh, during the quarter, we received a cancellation notice uh, from the authorities. And uh, while uh, there is a provision to file an appeal against that particular order, and we have already filed that appeal, that appeal is uh, you know, pending uh, review in front of the appropriate authorities. Uh, but out of a conservative basis, we have taken that impairment provision. Once the outcome of the appeal is more clear, at that point of time, uh, we will revisit this provision. So this is to the extent of three and a half crores. Yeah. Okay, so we can expect about six to seven crore run rate. Yeah. All right. Uh, so secondly, um, <clears throat> though in the previous call you had mentioned that uh, moving outsource salespeople to permanent payroll of the company does not help us on the cost side. Uh, just wanted to double check that this strategy have not really aided our margin expansion this quarter. Yeah, the only on, only thing is that uh, as you bring them in uh, from a from a temp staffing payroll to a, a company payroll, while uh, most of the benefits are same, uh, people do value a large company payroll uh, thing. And uh, hope that results into uh, some percentage point reduction in the attrition or, or retention, which further helps us improve the uh, productivity. That helps us improve the uh, sales and marketing cost. Sure. So there's no training cost per se when they migrate to permanent payroll, right? I mean, that would be immaterial to make any difference on the, uh, but I'm saying uh, the attrition has a two-edged sword. Uh, one, it will, it, it gives you a cost of hiring, cost of training, and the other, it uh, gets you a productivity uh, dent both. So in case we are able to save uh, a few percentage points on attrition uh, by moving uh, people from, uh, outsource to insource, uh, in-house, that should generally help us save some cost and save, uh, give some better productivity. Awesome. So in the medium to long term, it's, it's a lever for margin. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you so much and uh, best of luck. Thanks, Arun. Next question is from the line of Jasdeep Palia from Clockwine Capital. Hi, Jasdeep. Please go ahead with your question. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes we, we can. can. Uh, sir, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so what is the growth in the number of gold and platinum customers for uh, FI24 and uh, 4Q24? So gold and platinum customers uh, are now at about 49% of the total customer base which was about 47% at the beginning of the year. Okay. At the beginning of the year, we were uh, 206,000 uh, customers, right? Mm -hmm. 203, 203,000 customers. And 47.5% uh, of that was gold and platinum. Now we are... 49% uh, to be precise. Uh, of so what was the number at the beginning of the year? 46.9? No, 47.5. Uh, 47 now okay. it is 49. Got it. And so what is the growth in revenue of gold and platinum customers for the year? I, I always say uh, that approximate number I have given you that now it is close to 75%, uh, but it is still not exactly 75%. Uh, I think you can give the exact number of uh, uh, what is the this seventy five percent exact yeah, seventy three percent seventy three percent is the current exact number uh, of the revenue. Uh, I won't be able to give you last year number. But last year ten top ten percent ka arpu if you see last test top ten percent arpu in the FY twenty three was two lakh fourteen thousand rupees. For the FY24, it is 2,47,000 rupees, which is very similar to Platinum ARPU. Got it, sir. And sir, the, is there any change in the churn metrics for glow, go, uh, gold and platinum customers or they remain? So nothing on the platinum side. Uh, platinum is about 12% uh, of our customer base or so. Uh, keep varying because the bottom, uh, because of the uh, denominator. Uh, on the gold side, as I said, about 40% or 35% uh, of our customer base, that's where, uh, because the numbers have gone uh, quickly uh, high from 45% uh, of uh, 1,50,000 to now 49% or 50% or so. So there we have seen a big number. So there might be 1% uh, uh, churn uh, reduction from uh, 10, 11% to 12, 13%, but that's about it. Yeah. You know, just to clarify, the churn uh, actually is dependent also on the vintage of the customers and the evolutions of the customers. So, so they may, like, it's, you know, vary because of, uh, you know, these factors. However, on a like-to-like -like basis, there is no change as such in the gold and the platinum uh, customer churns. There are uh, by and large stable and by and large growing and by and large paying more, more money. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thanks, Justi. Thank you very much, everyone. It has been a very engaging session. I, I would now like Dinesh, sir, to give his concluding remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining our year end conference call. We have tried to address your queries uh, in the time available, but in case uh, any of your questions were not taken up, uh, please do reach out to our uh, uh, investor relations team on uh, ir at inyama.com and uh, we will be able to help you from there. Thank you and uh, have a great day and uh, uh, good wishes for your uh, next financial year. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. 
on behalf of india mart we now conclude this webinar thank you